Let's install the Catalyst 8000V. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. And before we get into how to deploy this thing, let's talk a little bit about licensing because I think it's important for everybody to understand when you purchase it. So number one, you're gonna select, are you purchasing this on-premise or cloud? Then you're gonna select a tier. So we can go from 50 meg all the way up to 50 gig. And the important thing here to know is that obviously if you're only deploying a T0 or a tier zero, that's gonna be less expensive. If you go up to a tier four, that's gonna be more expensive for the licensing. Then you're gonna select your package. Is this a essentials uh, router? Do we only need DNA essentials on it or do we need DNA advantage on it? And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna select your term. Do I wanna buy this for three years, five years, or seven years? And the one very important thing to note is that DNA, while you're running this box, is mandatory. There is no other smart net or anything like that tied to this box. It's just a pure subscription to run it. So after three years, if you decide, hey, I don't wanna renew DNA anymore, you're basically saying that, hey, we're not gonna be running this box anymore. So just make sure you guys keep that in mind. Next, once you purchase it, you're gonna get your entitlements. So you can head over to cisco.com and this is where we're actually gonna download the software from. Click on support at the top, products and downloads, and you're gonna go ahead and search for 8000V. On the download page here, go ahead and select whichever version you want. So your iOS XE versions are on the left side here. And then if you're gonna be deploying this in VMware, go ahead and select your OVA file. If you're deploying this in the cloud, AWS, Azure, you're gonna to wanna to go through their marketplace to actually get the software. Um, if you're deploying it on-prem, here are all the on-premise files right here for you guys to get. Go ahead and click the download button on whatever version you want, and then we'll go and install it. Once you have your file, head over to your ESXi cluster, and we're gonna go ahead and create slash register a virtual machine. Deploy virtual machine from OVF or OVA file. Go ahead, click next. Put in a name for it and go ahead and click on the file that you just downloaded. Once you see the file here, go ahead and click next. Go ahead and select your data store, click next again. Next, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna select the ethernet mappings here. So what, what do I want my gigabit ethernet one, two, and three to point to in my virtual environment? Right now, I just have one network that's on here. It's called my VM network. Um, that's my 192, 168, 142 network. Just to make things simple for now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna select your deployment type. If this is just for a lab and you're just trying to do some testing, the small is totally fine. One virtual CPU, four gig of RAM, eight gig on the disk. If you're gonna go more than that, um, I would recommend probably if this was production, probably start off with a medium. That'll take you to probably around 400, maybe you can get 500 meg out of this box. Two virtual CPUs, four gig of RAM. If you're gonna go more than that, and you're gonna start pushing you know, into the gigabit range, then I'd probably go with a, with a large um, deployment here. And one thing that is not publicly available yet that I will publish and I'll put in the description of the video when it is out is a sizing guide. So how do I know exactly like, hey, if I'm gonna be pushing two gig on this box or five gig on this box, what deployment I really need to be going with? Once, when that comes out, I will put that in the description of the video, so just watch out for that. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and select small and go ahead and click next. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit finish here. VMware is gonna go ahead and do its thing, get this file uploaded here, and in a second, we'll turn it on. And once the OVA gets deployed, go ahead and start the VMware image. It should auto start, but if not, go ahead and start it yourself. And go ahead and click on the little console window here. And we're gonna take a look and see what this box is doing. So at this point here, this should look exactly like a regular 8300 series router or an ISR 4K. Uh, it's basically running iOS XE. And you can either go through the initial configuration dialog just like you would a normal router or bounce out of it, hit no, and then configure your router just like you, you have in the past. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select no. And once you say no, it's gonna make you go in and enter an enable password here. So we're just gonna pick this. You cannot pick Cisco by default. I'm sure you can go in, you can change these policies, but by default, you have to put something in here besides Cisco or Cisco 123. Once your enable secret is in there, you can go ahead and save the configuration and exit. Once you get through all the syslog messages, hit enter a couple times, you should be at your router prompt here. And we can do a couple things, a couple show commands. 
just to show you guys that there are three interfaces and we can start setting this thing up if we want to get into enable mode go ahead and enter your password that you put in there before and that's it you're up and running uh, at this point I'd recommend probably getting SSH working on this box that way you don't have to open up VMware all the time um, if you get SSH working you can just Helm that into it or SSH into it like you do the rest of your devices. So guys, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions on setting this thing up, post below. And oh, as always, appreciate you guys watching.